Hello and welcome back to another video in the Introduction to Memory Forensics series. In this video, we're going to look at how to use volatility to analyze memory captures from newer versions of Windows 10, specifically from Creators Update and Fall Creators Update. As of the recording of this video, the current version of volatility is 2.6. However, even if you have this version installed, you may not necessarily have the latest profiles required to analyze memory from newer builds of Windows 10. As you can see from this page, there is a profile entitled Win10x64 underscore 15063, which according to the creator's text in paren, tends to indicate that it will work for Windows 10 Creators Update. In fact, although it isn't listed here, there is also another profile entitled Win10x64 underscore 16299 that is referenced within the source on the project's official GitHub page. As you can see from this Windows 10 version history graphic, courtesy of Wikipedia, 15063 is the build number for Creators Update and 16299 is the build number for Fall Creators Update. You'll also note the other build numbers referenced here for older versions of Windows 10 which align with the profile names already available to us within Volatility 2.6. In the next part of this video, we'll take a look at the SIFT Workstation, a collection of digital forensics and incident response tools distributed by SANS, which in my case is installed on top of an Ubuntu 16.04 machine, as well as the latest version of Kali Linux Rolling Edition. Both of these VMs have the newest version of Volatility installed as of this recording, which again is 2.6. However, SIFT does not include the elusive 15.063 or 16.299 profiles, whereas Kali includes 15.063, but not 16.299. We'll first try to analyze a memory capture from a machine that was running Windows 10 Creators Update using the newest profile available to us in SIFT 14.393. As you might imagine, the results will be less than ideal. Then we'll explore a solution to the problem that will enable us to update our installation of volatility to include these new profiles. So let's get started. Okay, first stop, our SIFT workstation. As you can see, you are looking at an external drive that contains several different memory samples. We're going to be taking a look at memdump underscore 16299.mem which as the name implies, was taken from a Windows 10 machine running build 16.299. So first off, let's run vol.py without any options to invoke volatility, and you'll see that we are indeed running version 2.6. Now normally we would run image info or more preferably KDBG scan to determine the correct profile to use, but since I already know the build from which this memory image was acquired, there isn't a need to do that. Let's just jump straight in and try to analyze this memory image using what should be the correct profile. And again, this is going to be this particular memory image. And for the profile, we're going to try win10x64 underscore 16299. And we'll go ahead and run a PS tree. Now, when we do that, you'll notice it says invalid profile. There is no 16299 profile. All right, what if we back up to 15063? Well, there's no 15.063 either. Okay, what about 14.393? Well, it turns out that profile does exist and we'll give this a few seconds to run and we'll see that the results are probably not what we're expecting. Okay, well, that doesn't look very promising. As you can see, the results are just gibberish. And in fact, even if we had had 15.063 present, which we will find in the Kali Linux rolling distribution, that still isn't the correct profile to use. We need 16299 in order to properly analyze this particular memory image. So next up, let's switch over to our Kali Linux rolling distribution VM, verify that it does indeed have 15063, but not 16299, and then we'll look at a way that we can remedy this. Okay, we are now in our Kali Linux rolling distribution VM. So let's go ahead and run volatility without any parameters to verify that we are indeed using version 2.6. In Kali, it's not vol.py, it's simply volatility. So if I run that, you'll see that we are using version 
Now if I use dash dash info and pipe the output through more, we'll actually see a list of our supported profiles and among them you can see 15063 is present, however we don't see 16299. So we do have one new additional profile available to us that we didn't see in the version of volatility included with the SIFT workstation. So what happens if we use this particular profile with our memory dump from 16299? So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll specify the full path to the memory image here, which again is memdump 16299. And for the profile, it is win 10x64 underscore 15063. And then we'll run a PS tree. Let's give that a few seconds to finish processing and see what the results look like. Well, that certainly looks better than what we saw when we tried to use the 14393 profile. Everything does appear to be quite normal. Now, a word of caution, I have not done extensive testing using 15063's profile with memory samples from 16299. There may very well be plugins that don't work exactly as they should, and you should certainly always use the correct profile for the memory image you're analyzing. That said, if you're close, oftentimes the results will still be there and we'll actually get something back other than gibberish. So the question then becomes, how do we add 15063 and 16299 to volatility on the SIFT workstation? or in this case, just add 16299 to volatility in Kali. Well, to answer that question, let's take a look at the Volatility Foundation's official GitHub documentation. And as you can see here under getting volatility, there is a simple git clone command that we can use to actually pull down the newest code from their git repo. Now, I will mention that if we try to download the prepackaged releases, as you see here, we see the Windows and Mac OS and Linux standalone executables, you'll notice the release date says December 2016. And even though this is directly from the Volatility Foundation, these do not include those two newest profiles. So that is one important thing to know. So in order to get this, let's go ahead and copy this git clone command to our clipboard here. And let's pull down the data from the repo. So let's go ahead and clear this. And we'll go ahead and do a git clone. And now on my desktop, you'll notice the volatility folder. And inside of it, we see a setup.py. So let's go ahead and change that so that we can execute it. And we'll run setup.py. In this case, we're going to use the install parameter to actually go ahead and install volatility. And we'll give it a few seconds and let it do its thing. and it appears to be done. And now in the same directory, we do see a vol.py. So let's go ahead and change that to 755 and go ahead and run vol.py. And it looks fairly normal. So now let's go ahead and repeat that same command, dash dash info. And let's see if we see additional profiles. And looking at the list here, we do indeed see not only 15063, but also 16299. So pulling down the code from the Git repo, we do have the newest profiles available to us, as you can see right here. Now, the other question is, is it possible to slipstream these profile changes into the version of volatility installed in SIFT or Kali? Probably so. The code differences that actually included the additional profiles appeared to be limited to a single Python file that was called win10.py. Now, I haven't done extensive testing in trying to do that. Uh, like I said, it may be possible, but what I would recommend doing is simply pull down the newest code from the Git repo and install it in a separate location so you'll have the very newest one available without conflicting with the package that is distributed with your particular distribution. So now we could simply use vol.py and repeat the same process using the correct 16299 profile to analyze our image and we shouldn't run into any issues. And that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to show you in this video. So again, volatility is an extremely powerful tool 
but you've got to have the profile correct or you're going to get results that are not what you expect. So thank you as always for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. There are plenty more on the way in the Memory Forensic series and the Windows Forensic series, plus a bunch of other new things that I'm working on later in the year. So please do like, subscribe, and share as always, and I will see you in the next video.